Welcome to the channel, everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. This is a show near and dear to my heart. Let's call it an anime. I don't know if uh, it's a cartoon. Fine, it was made in California, but its roots are so deep in anime. Let's just call it that for now. I think this is as close as a masterpiece, quote unquote, as you'll get. And for the general audience, it's got everything going for it. It's more of a... Now that I've watched Legend of Korra, which made me go back and revisit Avatar The Last Airbender, it's got a quality that the sequel does not possess. Now, I'll admit I didn't get into the books and stuff, which I'm going to do now. So there is a prequel er era and a after The Last Airbender era of comic books and uh connected um you know lore so maybe that will change some of my perspectives on Korra but Avatar The Last ben Airbender it's close to perfection as you're gonna get the series came out and it was beloved it was an event for me and my friends watching it and then getting the DVDs watching it watching it behind the scenes this is everything I would hope for in a cartoon, anime, a show in general. It's got such a Eastern mythology, the cultures, the themes. They all work and they all build on each other with the progress of the characters and the growth in them. It's done so well. Just superb all around. I guess you got to give these guys credit, but their names are hard to pronounce. Um... Oh boy, let's give this a try, right? I guess. Michael Dante DiMartino. Brian Konietzko. All right, well, maybe that's not so bad. I do so many of these science uh, things. Maybe I'm getting better at it. It was Nickelodeon's Shining Light. It won tons of awards. And just has a critical acclaim that does not get diminished with time. So right off the bat, no major plot and spoilers, but you got to watch the show. Great for kids and adults. Got some great world building. It just progresses nicely. And even the one-off episodes, they add to things and they make it a stronger um, foundation in the beginning episodes. Which is why when I get into The Legend of Korra, which I don't think is bad and horrible, like some might say, I will notice the differences in it. We have a Story that starts out with everything I love, martial arts, mythology, um, even though I don't believe in certain things, I love the um, reincarnation of the Avatar, the bending ability, so people are born with the ability to bend the elements, usually only one, but that can branch into other offshoots you find out, so fire benders might be able to eventually learn how to bend and use lightning or shoot lightning. I don't know if they could manipulate it from the sky. That would be interesting. I don't know if I could. Hmm, that might be uh, something to look into. And so forth, uh, earthbenders could move metal because there's impurities in it. And they could move the, you know, the rock inside that. Waterbenders and airbenders. And the journey of this 12-year-old kid who's found in a world that's been suffering for 100 years the lineage of his airbending school, the whole culture has been decimated. It's touching, it's heart-wrenching. You've got Katara and Soka, just lovable characters that grow over the show. One of the great villains, Zuko, and all the attachments that build. Characters that come in out of nowhere, you just start loving them. Toph and uh, the Earthbender, just... You're blown away, and it's a experience you gotta watch. This is, like I said, it's as close to a masterpiece in this type of, in almost any genre. It's just that well done. Uh, you know, circumstances come together that creativity and opportunity just meet, and it's just done so well. It's amazing. We have all the martial arts, like I said, that I'm into. When you watch the behind the scenes, they get into everything about what's Tai Chi, you know, using the water bending, uh, the mantis style, 
or uh, earthbending, things like that. It just blow me away. I am so into that. I talk about my Dungeons and Dragons love, and AD and D Second Edition had Oriental Adventures, and it would have a formula to teach you how to make style. So it would give you generic, let's say, kung fu, karate, and jujitsu. But they had a formula and a method to create style, so you can create snake style. So I created the five deadly venoms uh, as characters to, uh, or character classes to pick as the monk, or, you know, all shoots of the monk. So I am so into it. Um, my deadly addictions channel, everything, the whole fictional world I created. Not that I copied this; it was not in my mind to do that. Just that. It's such a love of mine, the fantasy genre. Yes, maybe I'm more into the swords and sorcery stuff. But this has exotic creatures, and then you got the four elements, and then spirit. And the avatar who could wield all four elements and enter an avatar state. These things are built upon and shown. The heart-wrenching moments, the darkness, the light. It's just perfectly done. Now... There are people who do this way better than me, and they, yes, it's not a perfect show. You can go and find things that are legitimate critiques, and not just subjective takes, like, look, uh, I love this show, and it's bad, but, I, you know, I get a kick out of it. No, this is, I think, objectively a great show, and yes, you can, you can find things that are wrong with it, so. But in a general sense, you don't get something like this, where it will live on forever, it'll have its cult following, it's now, I think, a franchise in a sense. I, I think in 2021, the creators started an offshoot studio. And the movie that was made off of this almost destroyed everything. M. Night Shyamalan did a live action movie, which I don't even know I should bring up in this podcast, but it nearly destroyed everything. It created lots of bullshit. And then when they tried to do The Legend of Korra, there's some issues there. I'll get into that when I do that podcast. But on its own, it's not blemished. Even when you add all the other things, and like I said, I will get into the books and the other ancillary uh, connecting tissue. But I don't care how bad, like I'm not that type of person who will look at, oh, you know what, the sequel ruined it. Although, I gotta admit to being a hypocrite maybe, when, like Star Wars, the last, je uh, what was it, um... Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, but the second one and the third one, they're fucking horrible, they ruin Luke Skywalker, they destroy everything, to me they just don't exist. So, you know, try to be honest, you know, this is how close this is to me, and lots of things are uh, cemented in my psyche from the experience, the friends I'm watching it with, the love and the excitement you're into every show, you're talking about it, it's got that X-Files feeling, not in genre and tone, but just the love and amazement of what creativity brings, why we love stories so much, how you blend everything and go deep into the culture. you got the themes that work on so many levels, and it's shown in the ratings and the critical response, what it's left, you know, what's come after. you got so much in the, uh, you know, video games also. And I would imagine if I was a kid, I would say lunchboxes, backpacks. I mean, you name it. And I don't even see many. I hate Avatar The Last Evan. And if you do, it's more of a joke and more of a clickbait type thing. But don't get me wrong. You're going to find problems in it. And you can probably figure them out here and there. But they don't ruin it. It's like when you do something well and you got a couple of mistakes. Or you don't use the right method. And you're trying to do something different. Even if you know. You're going off the trajectory of, you know, classic storytelling. Just amazing. Even when you do flashbacks, the show does it right. Now, this is, like I said, a perfect storm, maybe, because I'm not that fond of Korra. I'll watch it, and I won't binge watch it again and again. If it comes, you know, if it catches my attention, I might watch something. But there's a lot that I don't like, and it irks me. And there's a lot of studio stuff going on. That's fine. I don't blame, you know, people want to get their vision out. I understand that as someone who wants to, or I would love to see someone make an animated show, The Deadly Addiction Chronicles, you know, and have my characters running around and, oh, it would just go nuts. And 
you know, you want to have your love out there and your product. This is amazing. You're not going to get better, in my opinion. And like I said, to go into in-depth would be something I would do if I had lots of feedback and I had, you know, subscribers and we were going back and forth and maybe I would go through each episode and just show, highlight what amazes me, what I love, even maybe getting objective into, you know, how storytelling and, uh, you know, the writing cues that this gives you are really inspirational to influence the genre you're in. This does it all. There's so many characters you can't even go into. It's just hard. Like if I say, you know, um, Ang, Korra, Sako, and like Zuko, you got everybody else. You got so many, uh, General Iroh, the people who, uh, mentors to people you got the past avatars that the avatar can reach out to which fucking pisses me off with Korra and whatever but i don't know if that's changed in the comic books and stuff this spirit world that they use very well and they don't go nuts with it like they did in Korra but we're talking about avatar the last airbender one of the best cartoon animes looking at it as a western thing i still consider it a you know an eastern cultured anime it's just so deep in there and done so well this fantasy epics is everything in there and it, when you look at it it's like oh i'm gonna critically look at this arc and this and you might yeah you'll find little things here and there but you can see how well it was done. The choreography of the fights, the bending of the elements, you know, it was amazing to see. And starting from what, 2003, I think it was, right? 2004 was the teaser. Yeah, so about 2005, let's say, uh, the pilot episode was made in 2003. And, you know, it's production and stuff. And it's going to hold up forever. There are certain things when you look at in this, you know, film animation and how people write and just the love they put into these things that endures them over ages. Now, sometimes you got like something that's bad or not that good, but it becomes a cult classic and the flaws are overlooked. This is a show I wouldn't even argue that. I don't even think you got many flaws that could pile up and make it something that you don't like. But granted, that's up for everybody to decide, right? But I, you know, I phantom myself a writer to some extent. I would love to have my creations be put on the screen and even animation and uh, live action and comic books. And I have my own methods and I write my screenplays or my uh, outline for a series. I did the pilot for the cartoon of my world. Even a trading card game, which I really drew inspiration from Yu-Gi-Oh, which is a cartoon I might actually anime I might talk about. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I actually have like fucking nine decks in my house. And that was for getting off of Magic the Gathering. Big huge player back in the day. I used to play in the store with the tournament stuff. In the long run, Avatar the Last Airbender will endure it all. It'll endure shitty sequels, shitty prequels, shitty comic books. For me, I don't let things th in that way bother me. So as much as I hate Star Wars, The Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, they don't ruin the original Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. It doesn't ruin all the books I read and now the Legend series, or whatever the fuck they're calling it. And as someone who appreciates The Mandalorian, <clears throat> but sees it as not very good, it's enjoyable. But there's lots of flaws in it. But it's a breath of fresh air. It's what we wanted. It's at least close to the vision we see. Avatar The Last Airbender just came out of nowhere and gave me stuff I didn't know I wanted in this blend. You know, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings stuff. I watched those old cartoons with the animations, which are great. In a subjective way that I loved them, but, you know, they were ripped apart to a certain extent. Objectively, you know, looking at them. However... Avatar was not something I thought I was going to like it. I didn't, you know, the, in the periphery of my daily life at that time, it really wasn't something I'm paying attention to. Someone drew it to my attention and, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll give it a shot. And then it's, you're blown away. 
So I recommend this show to everybody. Adults, children. Yes, I mean, everybody has uh, little quirks about what they want kids to learn and stuff. But there's a lot of good messages in this show. I think there's a love and heart of creativity in here. And like I said, it's hard to describe in that sense when you fancy yourself someone like that and go, you know what, I would love this opportunity. And which is why I really love indie filmmaking. I do have issues with it, obviously. Um, there's a give and take of things like that. I, I, I would love to see more people given opportunities like this. And there are probably many shows more like this. I think when I was younger, it was Berserk or uh, what was it? When Ninja Chronicles was what an animated movie. There's some great things out there. We can all go back to Akira and Ghost in the Machine. But never was I taken on such an adventure that had so many layers and blends and paced the right way. Because uh, even when I watched the anime of X-Men or um, they did a Wolverine, I think, you can see the, color, the, the way they pace things, the way they frame things and hold on to it. Look at Dragon Ball Z, things like that. This was like just in a way new and old. It was let's blend these cultures and this storytelling. Let's root it deep in certain cultures and come up with new things. And it just blows me away to this day. Watching Legend of Korra, um, knowing that I was going to eventually do a podcast on it, going back and watching Avatar, it's such a joy. There's so much to love and revisit, things you look at in the background, things that creep up on you that you realize later, the emotions of it, the subtle character developments and interactions, the ending, which is kind of, um, you know, I'd love to, do, you know, talk about it and debate it. It's like he's told, Avatar Aang is told, you're, you know, he's a pacifist, he doesn't like violence and stuff. But he's basically told, you're going to have to sacrifice your own values in order to save the world. Because if you don't kill this Fire Lord, it's going to be the end of things. And that dilemma at the end is so felt, it's so earned. And you can even debate, now he did the wrong thing. It's just really nuanced, layered, developed really well. And like I said, you're going to get these nitpicks in there, and I don't disagree with them in that sense. There are some flaws, you know, along the way. But when you've got so much good work and talent around it, you could, oh, they, they become little things that, for me, can be just overlooked and not even picked up on again. You know, it's just a, it's an odd thing. Like, I could watch, what I watched the other day, uh, I love, um... Dread, the remake or the new one. And I kind of love the old one. That's so funny, right? I love Judge Dread with Sylvester Stallone, but it's campy nonsense and it's garbage. It's like not a real good movie. And Dread, what is it called? Uh, Urban, right? Call Urban. Should have won awards. It should have been like a blockbuster. And then, you know, but even watching that, I'm, I'm looking at the floors and when you got something. That really is dear to you. Your biases will overcome those things. And if you have a you know, a thought going in, you're not going to like it. That's fine. But I would encourage people with this show to try to get over that. Get over the, oh, it's childish. I don't care about the themes, whatever. Maybe watch it with a friend and who might be into it. Or your kids or your nephews. And I think everybody would love this show. There's not that many flaws. If they're there, they're minor. But you've got everything going for it, story development, character, plot, artwork, just so much creativity and love and passion and, and done well, focused in the right way, in my opinion. You just can't go wrong with the show. Avatar The Last Airbender, maybe the closest thing to a masterpiece in the cartoon anime department, if you want to call it that. It's a recommendation for everybody, adults and kids, watch it. Much love to everybody.
want everybody to do well. Take care. Till next time.